Hey guys, Luca here. So it's been a while now, and many people might be wondering, like, is it finally time to be a software engineer? So first off, I think what we have to look at is still the supply and demand. One of the good signs that we have seen is based on the CompTIA report. They make monthly, quarterly report based on the labor statistics, and they have shown an increase in tech job availabilities. So right now, there has been 65,000 job openings in the tech field, considering in the previous months, it was the negative growth. And now when we look around, there's not as much major layoff anymore. Most of the big tech companies already finished with the round of layoff. And now a lot of them are also resuming hiring. So these are all pointing to the right direction. But what's not? Inflation is still very high. The amount of salary growth is also very slow. So like these in combination still creates a little bit of uncertainty for a lot of companies. So maybe this will deter them from hiring very aggressively, but rather still slow the pace down. So although there is an increase, it may not be as big of an increase. Let's take a minute to understand like what this number can kind of tell us. So right now there is about like 65,000 open jobs and Based on my previous video, there has been like a hundred thousand plus like software engineers that being affected. Of course, a percentage of them aren't within the states. So what are we looking at? So the graduating class of 2023 now officially entered the market. Graduating class of 2022 who might be still looking for an entry level job or people who are thinking about switching because they had to find whatever job available when they first graduated back in the day. So now all of these people are still looking at job opportunities. A student alone, every single year, there's about 65,000 students with a bachelor degree of some sort of relevant tech experiences looking for entry-level tech jobs. And on top of that, if we look at the bootcamp stats, in 2021, we have 56,000 people graduated from a US bootcamp. In 2022, that number increased to 58,000. We don't really know the number for 2023 just yet, but I'm guessing the number won't be too far away from around 50,000 as well. So this also shows there's still a lot of people looking for jobs in the market. But I think what's true is the fact that from a company's perspective, they want to hire qualified candidates for software engineer. Most people aren't qualified to be a software engineer unless they can prove themselves or have relevant experiences. And that's something that's really hard to justify from a fresh background. And I think that could be something that's stopping a lot of people from finding that first job. It's like they didn't even get a chance to prove themselves just yet. And one thing I do still believe is the fact that we don't have enough software engineers in the field. Sure, like there's a lot of people who want to be a software engineer, either because it's a lucrative job or it's something that they can easily pivot into. And that's far from good developers that a lot of companies is looking for. They don't want to just churn people. And historically speaking, like the tenure in the field isn't really high either. So many times people are fighting over top talents. So I would say like for people who are in the tech field already and who might be affected or looking for a job that's like senior and above, a lot of them are actually more desirable to many companies and many companies want to hire some sort of these like proven to be good software engineers. Like one thing we have to also recall is the fact that this year we also had a generative AI initiative like Applied AI, ChatGPT, BART, like these things become really big. A lot of newer startups are related to using some sort of AI in their tool. So there's tons of opportunity in here as well. And that will create a lot of opportunity for a lot of software engineers as well. Now let's take a step back and look at the bigger tech companies. Many of them have been running on this mindset of let's do more with less. Let's lower the headcount a little. Let's see if we can make everyone work a lot harder. You know, like we are done with people just like coasting, like resting and investing. Like we want people to actually make their worth. Like I think this is in the short term is definitely going to boost, you know, productivity. It's like people think their job is on the line, like they want to work harder, but it's definitely not sustainable. A lot of people can be burned out or a lot of people can lose trust in the company that they, you know, once respected. If you, if they constantly do this, like they will lead to like shorter tenures, like people who are good might want to retire or just leave completely. So I think this is the reason why like a lot of these bigger companies are still are going back to reevaluating. Like if a team is really understaffed, like they have to 
slowly open up the headcount. Now we are heading towards the second half of the year. A lot of companies headcounts are more established. Like now they kind of know like what's the headcount that's missing. Like, hey, how many headcount do we actually need for some of these newer projects that we're trying to do by the end of this year? And what's the new roadmap looking like for next year? So I think these can also slowly open up a lot of more opportunities at these bigger tech companies as well. Like one thing I'm certain is the fact that tech is going to be extremely relevant in the future. Like we can see like how AI already shifted our life. But one thing I do see is the fact that AI still has a long way to go and it's very expensive. That's why like cloud infrastructure is still going to be very, very important. And I think cloud has been one of the biggest hiring for a lot of developers. And I think in the near future, like something cloud related will still require a lot of developers. So I think that's something that we can all be assured of. So what would be my advice? So I still think right now, if you're someone who's thinking about, you know, going into tech, like, hey, like, let me do a bootcamp or let me do whatever. And then hopefully I can find a job. I think if you, if you, that's something that align with you, then I don't know right now is the best time. It kind of feels like buying a lottery at this point, like, cause like you might be really smart, but from a company's perspective, they don't really know much about you and your background isn't really in tech. So it's still going to take time to prove yourself. And I think right now companies are more risk averse, like they want to be as tight with their budget as possible. So like, I think right now, if you are just thinking about like, Hey, hopefully I can find a job, then the chances are very slim, but it doesn't mean like right now, isn't a good time to pick up these tech skills. I think right now it would be useful time for you to find a good way, like hopefully a free way of picking up some of these skills to prepare yourself to build some of these portfolios like starting early. Because based on my research on a lot of these boot camps, like there's about 58,000 boot campers in the past. And some of the top hiring companies on that list were Amazon, Accenture, and JP Morgan. And we all know a lot of these companies has some sort of layoff or not hiring as much anymore. So given that the top boot camp hire aren't hiring, that's a you know concerning sign for a lot of boot campers. Of course, there are other middle-sized company, like smaller size company that's still like looking for people, you know, they just want a developer who can come in and help. So I think like those still are available, but it's still pretty high of a risk. If you, you know, are willing to take a risk and be like, Hey, my goal is to become a tech developer one day anyways. Like I don't mind like, you know, picking up the skills so I can actually learn in a setting. Cause like many people might struggle to learn on their own time. But if you can learn in a group setting and then carry on this skill and building, you know, your own projects or like open source contribution or just keeping the skill sharp somehow, like I think that could be, you know, a good usage of the time. So in conclusion, I would still say like, yeah, the supply is still very, very high in the market while the demand isn't nearly as much as like, you know, pre pandemic level. So I would say like, yeah, like over because like we have so many like staggering, like graduating class from 2021, 2022, now 2023, and boot campers from 2021, 2022, like, you know, all of these are accumulating. So it's going to really take time before I think there's going to be like a good balance of like, oh, what's the supply, what's the demand. So I think it's going to be a slow ride until the end of the year and maybe even next year. So I would, so I would say like right now, it's still a pretty tough time for a lot of people to consider going into tech. So yeah, guys. I hope this video was informative and helpful and uh, let me know what you guys think. I would actually be very interested in seeing like, hey, like if you recently found a job, like maybe you can share a little bit about your background. Like, did you graduate from a bootcamp? Is this your first job? Like, you know, like I think these can be useful data points for a lot of people. So if you don't mind sharing, like that would be great. So thank you so much guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I will talk to you guys next time.